Ain't nobody messing with my queens, listen up. You ain't gotta love me, cause I love me. Put a hand up if you in the trenches building confidence. And put a hand up if you need some mending for your heart that's healing. Salute, say you in attendance, this army's relentless. A weekly dose of motivation, give me your attention. This is for all the queens, going hell by any means. They chasing our self esteem, it's not as hard as it seems. Go, 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 queen. the All Queens Army podcast. It's your girl, your host, Coach Breezy. I am here today with another dope episode for the Queens. Yes, honey. I'm super excited that we are in season four. Oh yeah, it's season four. I know y'all get so tired of me being super duper pumped all the time about how many seasons we have done. I don't care y'all because I be pumped. I be super proud of myself. Okay. Y'all got to learn how to be proud of yourselves too. If you don't be bigging yourself up, boo, because if you don't big yourself up, I will. But if you don't big yourself up nobody else will okay all right so I have such a great topic for you guys today it is going to be super duper motivational super duper fire so I can't wait to get into it okay because you know it's motivational Monday and y'all know this is the day that I be motivating the shit out of you and today is no different okay we're going to be talking about five ways to stop being passive and say how you feel with confidence I'm excited about this topic because I see so many of my queens being super passive and very uncomfortable standing up for themselves and saying how they feel and being assertive about their own needs, okay? So we're gonna talk about why it's important to say how you feel and stand up for yourself and how to do that very confidently, okay? Before we get started, really, really, really quick, make sure you subscribe to All Queens Army Queens. I remind you guys every week, so go to allqueensarmy.com, click on the subscribe tab and go ahead and subscribe. You can also do it from the link in my bio on Instagram at All Queens Army, okay? So make sure you guys subscribe. It's very, very important. It's the only thing that I ask you guys to do okay so finally let's get into today's topic we're going to be talking about five ways to stop being passive and say how you feel with confidence and again queens it is so very important that you know how to use your voice that you feel comfortable and confident using your voice when you need to speak up for yourself let's talk about this whole passive thing let me explain what passive means so that we're all on the same page and we're talking about the same thing passive people tend to just let life happen right they sit back they kind of watch they look they listen, they observe, but they really don't participate. They really don't like get in there and take action or get in there and be bold, get in there and be confident, get in there and make decisions, get in there and take responsibility, get in there and be accountable for things that are going on in their lives, okay? A lot of times passive people are always taking the submissive route. Now again, there's nothing wrong with being submissive, but if you're always submissive with most things and you feel more comfortable sitting back and letting other people take the reins and letting other people guide the ship yeah that may not be super healthy because everybody isn't always going to make the best decisions for you so being submissive all the time prioritizing other people's needs over yours and prioritizing people's opinions over yours where other people's needs and requirements take precedence over what you need and what you require yeah that's passive those are characteristics of being passive where you're literally just sitting back and you're not taking action you're not standing up for yourself you're not doing anything about any of the things that are going on in your life, okay? And the reason that being passive can be detrimental to your life is because you'll feel resentment. And then some people can even turn into little bitter betties, right? (laughs) Like you wind up becoming a bitter person because you're not happy. Passive people do not tend to lead happy and fulfilled lives. And that's because you're not asserting yourself to getting what you want in your life. You're allowing other people and life in general to guide you wherever it wants to go because you don't either feel comfortable or don't don't feel confident steering your own ship, requiring and demanding what you need or going after what you want. And so what happens is you wind up feeling resentment because at the end of the day, listen, everybody wants what they want. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to be fulfilled. But if you're not going to take any action, if you're not going to take any accountability, if you're not going to put forth any effort to making sure that your life goes in the direction of the things that make you happy and you just go with what someone else wants to do or prioritizes what someone else wants from you, then yeah, eventually that quiet voice that you have, the fact that you're not standing up for yourself is going to cause you to feel resentment. And the irony of it all, the ironic part 
of it is you'll wind up feeling the bitterness and the resentment towards the people in your life or towards the circumstances in your life that you're allowing to guide your life and to make decisions for you. You'll wind up feeling resentment towards those people and towards those circumstances. You'll also wind up feeling frustrated. You're frustrated because things aren't going the way you want because you never get what you want. You're always giving and you're always prioritizing other people and you're always doing for other people and you're always doing what other people want to do, but you never wind up getting back what you need in return. So it feels very frustrating. It also feels very unempowering. Eventually you'll feel like you're unappreciated and then that starts to trickle into low self-esteem and low self-confidence because you don't feel like people are caring about what you want, what you need, how you feel. But here's the bottom line. It's not that they don't care and it's not that people don't want to give you what you want and it's not that life won't take you in the direction that you want to go and it's not that you can't manifest the things that you want and it's not that you can't hit the goals that you want to hit. It's not that. That's not the problem. The problem is that you aren't taking the bull by the horns and guiding that goddamn thing the way you want it to go. The problem is that you're not standing up for yourself and telling people what it is that you need and what it is that you expect and what it is that you demand. The problem is that you're not going after your dreams and you're not going after your goals and you're not taking steps towards the plans that'll take you in the direction that you want to go. That's the real problem. So that's the scary part about being passive is that you wind up living a life where you're constantly fulfilling other people and you are never being fulfilled. But you have to understand that it's your fault. You have to take accountability for it because if you're not asking for or requesting or going after what you want, how do you expect to get it? You can't get something that you're not willing to ask for. You can't get something that you're not willing to fight for. You can't get something that you're not willing to go after. That's just what life is all about. You can't sit back and put your feet up and put your hands behind your head and chill out and expect all of the good things and all of the blessings to just be poured upon you, baby. If you want the blessings to be poured upon you, if you want to attract the people who are going to love you, if you want to attract the relationships that you want, if you want to attract the job, the career, the money, the success, the friendships that you want, the travel, whatever it is that you want to attract, the big house, the better car, new experiences, I don't care what it is. If you want those things in your life, if you want to feel good every day, if you want to feel appreciated, if you want to feel loved, if you want to feel confident like you the shit boo, then you got to get up and you got to go for it and you got to go after it and you got to demand it and you got to take those steps. You can't just sit back and be passive waiting for everyone else, waiting for life or waiting for God to just make the decisions that are best for you, to make the decisions that benefit you. That's your job. You have to do that, okay? And so those are some of the consequences of being passive. You wind up feeling resentment, even maybe bitterness. You get frustrated. You feel unempowered. Like I said, eventually you'll feel unappreciated. And your self-esteem starts to wither away. And here's the bottom line. And this is the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest consequence of being a passive person is you are an easy target for people who will manipulate you and take advantage of you. You are an easy target. You are exactly the type of person that narcissists look for. You are exactly the type of person, you have the exact personality that people who wanna take advantage of other people want to get close to. And so that's the other thing about it. Remember, we always talk about manifesting okay? Because in life, you're manifesting everything. So if you're passive, you wind up manifesting people who are going to treat you bad because they know they can, because your energy gives off that you are a pushover. Maybe that's kind of harsh, but I want to give it to you straight, Queens, because I want you to understand how important it is and why it's important that you learn how to stand up for yourself and speak with confidence. Now, let me talk about how some people get passive confused, because I know some of y'all turn your lips up like, girl, I'm not passive. I'm nice. I'm easygoing. Well, let me tell you something, okay? People get those two confused a lot, okay? Some people think that they're just a nice person, and I'm using finger quotes. They think that they're just considerate. They think that they're just helpful. You know, hey, I'm likable. I'm easygoing. I don't demand a lot, and all that kind of stuff. And some people take those personality characteristics like nice person, considerate person, helpful person, likable person, easygoing person, fun person, everybody loves me person. Like, some people take those personality characteristics and qualities, and they take them to the extreme, meaning you want to be so likable. You want to be so helpful. You want to be the nicest person. You want to be the most considerate person someone has ever met in their whole life. Baby, if you do that, you have now moved into being totally passive. You can actually be a nice person and be considerate and be helpful and be likable and be easygoing and then still have boundaries that say, okay, now that I'm not doing. Okay, now that you can't do to me. Okay, now you took it too far, baby. You have to have boundaries. If you are just too nice, so much so that you have no 
boundaries and you let people just ice skate all over you doing whatever they want because you nice you're not nice you're passive so don't confuse being super nice super likable all of those positive things where everybody likes you and everybody talks about how great you are keep in mind getting all of that outside praise because you're such a great person or you're such a nice person and all of that good stuff it's like a drug you guys have to be careful with all of that outside validation all of that patting on the back and slapping on the butt and add a girls and good job and you're so sweet and you're so kind if you keep going with that and you become addicted to all of that gratification outside of you I'm telling you it's a drug look at what social media has done to people with likes and comments and all of that good stuff after a while if you seek all of that you're so nice and you're so kind all of those compliments if that becomes something that you need that makes you feel good that strokes your ego that makes you feel like you have better self-esteem that makes you feel confident if those are the things that you need to prop yourself up on you have to be careful with that because what you're going to do is you're going to constantly keep seeking it. Like I said, attention can turn into a drug. Your constant need for validation can turn into a drug. And what'll happen is if you keep on seeking it all the time, if that's what you want people to think about you all the time is that you're just the nicest person and you're the kindest person. I promise you inadvertently Queens, you will start silencing your voice because you will start to be afraid to say how you feel because you don't want to piss people off so that they say like, like, oh girl, she mean or she rude. That would be the bane of your existence for someone to tell you that they don't like the way you act or they don't like the way you did something. To be careful with that. Please be careful with that, okay? And I just wanted to throw that out there because I know a lot of people get confused and I know y'all was turning y'all lips up like, girl, some people just nice. Everybody ain't passive. No, baby. There's a difference in being nice and being passive, okay? I'm nice, but I'm not passive. I know a lot of people who are nice, but they're not passive. I can be nice to anyone. I can have a conversation with anyone. I can be kind and gentle and loving and compassionate to anyone. I'm the type of person that people seek out because they want to talk to me. They want to feel soothed. I make people feel good. But at the same time, while people love that about my personality, they don't play with me either because I can be nice, but I have boundaries. And if you bump up against my boundary or you do something that I don't like, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to sweep it under the rug. I'm not going to worry about pissing you off or you not liking me anymore. I'm not going to worry about you thinking I'm mean or you thinking I'm rude. I'm not going to worry about that because what's more important is not how, because what's more important is not your perception of me. What's more important is my emotional well-being, my mental well-being. And letting people treat you badly is very bad for your emotional well-being. Letting people do things to you that don't feel good, that don't feel comfortable, that bring about emotions that you don't like is not healthy and it's not okay. It's emotional neglect on your part. You're doing it to yourself. Okay, so now that I didn't bop y'all over the head with that, let's talk about some of the causes of passive behavior. What are some of the things that cause people to be passive? How did certain people get get to be passive people? What happens in your life that creates that? So I can't speak to every cause of why people may be passive because I don't know every cause because I haven't talked to you, right? Now, if I talk to you one-on-one, that's a little bit different. I could probably pull it out of you just by doing some self-reflection and talking to you a little bit. So what I will do is give you the most common reason why some people are passive and this may resonate with you guys, okay? So sometimes what happens is that we've been taught that making waves and shaking tables and disagreeing or speaking up is impolite or rude or kind of labels you as the type of person that's difficult or not easy to get along with. Now, let me say this. This happens a lot to black women. It happens a whole lot. What happens is when we stand up for ourselves and when we speak up for ourselves, there's a lot of times where we get labeled as being bitchy, mean, harsh, negative. So we wind up getting those negative labels. And then what happens is because someone is labeling us that way, we become extremely conscious of how we are are behaving and how we act and how we say things. And what that does is it makes you walk around on eggshells, constantly worrying about or thinking about how someone is perceiving you standing up for yourself, thinking about our tone, thinking about the way we said it, thinking about if we shook our head or if we twitched our neck or if we used our hands to say period. We're constantly thinking about that. It becomes an insecurity for us. And when that starts to seep into your personality and starts to seep into your confidence, you wind up quieting your voice and changing the way you do things things and starting to let certain things go and certain issues roll off your back and not standing up for certain things and saying things like, oh, well, I just pick my battles and stuff like that. Queens, please be careful of that. There is a fine line. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't opportunities for us to look at the way we express ourselves or the way we communicate or the way we say things, but let's not beat ourselves up so much so that we're quieting our voice. We should never quiet our voice. I don't care who it makes uncomfortable. If your voice and you standing up for yourself and you you saying how you feel 
and you shaking a table or you making a wave is too much for the people you're around, then you need to get around other people. If it's too much for the people in your job, then you need to get another job. And that's just the bottom line because nobody, nobody ever did anything powerful on this earth without shaking some tables or making some waves or disagreeing with some people or speaking up, period. Remember, this is about you, your mental health, your emotional well-being, and that doesn't get compromised for anybody or anything, period. So just be careful about that. Some of us have been taught to quiet our voices because we don't want to make a big problem. Baby, let me tell you something. If someone is crossing your personal boundaries, it is a big problem, okay? So get out of that mindset. If that is one of the causes of why you are passive, you have to let go of that mindset. Our emotional well-being and our mental health is not up for debate and it is not to be compromised so other people can be comfortable, period. And that's all I have to say about that. So let's go into what you came here for, okay? Because I don't know if y'all came here to get bopped over the head like I just bopped you over the head, (laughs) but I bopped you anyway. So let's go ahead and talk about what you came here for, which was the five ways to express yourself boldly and with confidence, okay? Okay, so what are five things that you can do? Here's the first thing. You want to learn how to be assertive, okay? A lot of people hear that you want to stand up for yourself and what they hear is aggressive. Aggressive is not the term and it's not the word. The word is assertive. That means that you are speaking with confidence and boldly. You don't have to yell, curse, or act like an ass. You can speak with confidence and you can speak boldly and stand firm on what you think and what you believe in a very respectful way. And that's what you want to do. That's what being assertive is, okay? Here's the second thing that you can do. You want to express your needs and wants. Now, what I want to say about that is you have to make sure that you know what your needs and wants are because there's so many women that I talk to when I say things like you have to say what you want. You have to ask for what you want. You have to say what it is that you need. What I've noticed is that a lot of people can't even put a sentence together to say what they want or what they need. And that's because some of you don't even know what you want and you don't even know what you need. You literally have let society tell you what their version of success is or their version of what love looks like, but you have not identified it for yourself. You have to figure out what it is that you want and what it is that you need, what makes you feel loved and what makes you feel appreciated. What goals do you want to have? What life do you want to have? Not what someone else is telling you what it's supposed to look like or what it's supposed to feel like. What does it look like to you? What does it feel like to you? Because you can't boldly express what you want or what you need if you don't even know. So that's what I'll say about that one is you need to express your needs and your wants. However, you have to first know what they are. If you can't just spit out what you want in like 0.006 seconds if somebody asks you, then that means that you don't know. So I would do that first, okay? And that way you can start communicating it. Here's the third thing. You want to create boundaries and enforce them. The end enforce them is the most important part of that sentence because if you don't enforce your boundaries, then having them is pointless. That's like telling your kids that they're going to get punished if they come in after midnight, but then if they come in after midnight, you don't do a damn thing about it. Then they don't care about the rule, okay? So you you have to create the boundaries and enforce them. Again, I wrote that ebook about that. So if you need help with it, go download the ebook that I'll talk to you guys about in the beginning. All right, here's the fourth thing. You have to stand up for yourself, period. You have to. You have to start speaking up to people about things that you don't like, that you don't agree with, and that you don't accept. That's it, and that's all. Here's number five. You can learn how to attract people who love and appreciate you and not attract people that will manipulate you and take advantage of you. That's the fifth thing that you can do. So how do you do those five things that I just mentioned? Let me go through the five things again so we're on the same page. Number one was being assertive. Number two, express your needs and once. Number three, create boundaries and enforce them. Number four, stand up for yourself. Number five, learn how to attract people who love and appreciate you so you can stop attracting these people who take advantage of you and manipulate you and take you for granted, okay? Those are the five things that you can do to stop being passive and say how you feel with confidence. Now, how do you do those five things, okay? This is what makes All Queens Army different and stand out. I don't just give you the, hey, here's five things you can do. I actually give you suggestions on how to do them, okay? Because most people don't not know what to do. Most people just don't know how to do what they know they need to do. Okay, so let's get into that. How do you do those five things? And if you guys listen to the All Queens Army podcast regularly or you read any of the blogs, you already know what the answer is going to be here. Okay, so how do you do them? You have to do some self-reflection, ladies. You have to do it. So what is self-reflection? This is only for people who are newbies around here. Self-reflection is when you give yourself about 20 minutes of uninterrupted time to speak 
spend time with just you. No TV, no phone, no computer. Turn everything off. Get in a quiet space. Get a journal and sit with yourself in your thoughts, okay? Self-reflection is a form of meditation. It is where you are allowing yourself to get in touch with your innermost self, your innermost thoughts, your innermost fears, your innermost insecurities, your innermost needs, your innermost wants. Because your voice, who you are on the inside, gets snuffed out all day, every day by everything else that's going on in your life and all of your other responsibilities and all of your other things. Remember, queens, we prioritize so many things over us. We don't spend time with ourselves. And the only way that you're going to get to know yourself and overcome some of the things that you need to overcome in your life is you have to get back in touch with your true self. And that's what meditating is all about. The reason that I always talk about self-reflection is because in order to overcome things like being passive, you have to first get to the root cause of why it is that you're being passive. What caused you to be passive? Now, remember earlier in this episode, I gave you one example of a cause of why people are passive, but that may not be your reason. Your reason may be something very different. Your reason could be something like this. You know, when you were growing up, every time you spoke up for yourself, your parents told you to shut up and stay in a child's place and mind your business and something like that. Basically, your voice was silenced at a very early age. That could be your reason. I don't know. Everybody's life experiences are different. So in order for you to learn how to not be passive, you have to go into yourself to figure out what caused you to start being passive. Because let me tell you something, nobody's born passive. Kids are not passive. Kids say whatever the hell they want. They don't have any filters. All of those filters and fears and issues and insecurities were layered on throughout your life. Now they could have happened as a kid, but they also could have happened as an adult. So you wanna get to the root cause of it. I'm always going to tell you guys, that you have to get to the root cause of why you're doing what you're doing. It's not enough to just say, start doing something different, you know, start talking more, start expressing yourself more. That's not enough. If you just start trying to do the new thing and go in the new direction, you're always going to revert back to your old behavior because you never really resolve why you do it in the first place. So if you want to start being more assertive, express your needs and wants, create those boundaries and enforce them, stand up for yourself and attract people who love you, you have to get to the root of, well, why am I passive to begin with? What's causing me to be that way? That way, once you identify what it is that's causing you to be passive, you can resolve that. You can fix that. So that's why you want to do some self-reflection and resolve that. Heal whatever happened that caused you to start not using your voice. Heal whatever happened that caused you to lose your confidence. And then practice communicating what it is that you want. Practice saying how you feel, okay? The only way to get good at something is to practice. So So what does practice look like? Practice looks like when you find an opportunity to stand up for yourself, take that opportunity and do it. You actually have to do it. You guys have to participate and make an effort in overcoming the things that you want to overcome. It's not enough to just listen to this podcast and write down the five ways to stop being passive and be more confident. That's not enough. And that's what most people do. They listen to podcasts, they watch YouTube videos, they read blogs. Everybody takes in all of this information because I mean, there is a gajillion pieces of content that'll tell you all the same things. Everyone who has figured out how to unlock the limitations of their lives are probably going to tell you the same thing, just in a different way. My delivery may be different than someone else's, but I'm sure I'm probably saying something similar because the bottom line is you listening to what I'm saying doesn't fix the problem. What fixes the problem is you taking what you're learning and putting it into action. And that's the challenging part. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It's the challenging part, okay? So I hope that information was helpful for you guys. I hope that you take that and actually put it into action and do something with it. If you need help beyond just listening to this podcast, like you need one-on-one help, you can go look at the coaching program and reach out to me via the website and I will respond and we can kind of chat a little bit there. So with that being said, Queens, that is all for today. That is the end of this episode. Episode. I hope you all really enjoyed it. I hope that you felt all of my love that I'm giving to you guys. I say it with love, okay? Remember, I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to myself too. I still struggle with a lot of the things that I talk about. I'm still a work in progress. We all are, okay? There's no one over anyone else. I just chose to share my journey and share the things that I learned as I learned them. But trust me, queens, I am right there with you. I am learning every single day just like you are, okay? So I will talk to you guys next week. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Make sure you subscribe to the All Queens Army podcast. 
guys, make sure you also subscribe to the Old Queen's Army YouTube channel. I'm just giving y'all all kinds of instructions today, okay? <laughs> and last but not least, make sure you visit us on Instagram at Old Queen's Army, okay? I love you, Queen, so much. I will talk to you next week. See you later. Bye. Oh,